Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Homebrew Wednesday. These Wednesdays come around quite frequently, don't they, these days? It seems like time just flies. Um, but uh, I'm happy to do it. I'm starting the video off in this uh, in my brewing area here, and then I'll take you over and we'll talk over there about some stuff. Let's, uh, let's take you around and show you what we've got. Nothing special really brewing, although there are some, it's a couple things coming up real, real soon that I'm going to be doing, um, and even I did something tonight that was uh, kind of an experiment, but uh, let's just take the camera and uh, see. Nothing really big. I've got a, a, a Mexican Cerveza here, and um, uh, it's got a heat belt on. I'm not sure what the temperature is. You guys can probably see it. It might be a little high, actually. I should probably take that off. And I've got a batch of wine here. Uh, this wine has... Um, uh, oak oak chips or oak dust in it to make it taste like it's been aged in oak barrels So we'll see how that turns out, but that's a wine kit there so um, You can see there's quite a bit of star sand sitting over there. <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute and uh, So with that I think we should go over and we'll uh, we'll talk and do the rest of the video cheers Okay, here we are Cheers, guys. This is actually... Uh, I'm, I've been really um, slack lately about home brewing because I, I've actually been um, getting back into recording music a little bit. And so, you know, I just don't have enough time to do everything. Uh, so, um, I, uh, I've, I've just... I've got a batch down tonight and I've got some other stuff going on now, finally. And my SJ Pour beer is all measured out, and I'm going to brew that tomorrow, so that's all good. There's lots of time for that anyway. Um, but in the meantime, I've got a, like a, a regular, just a cheap old store-bought beer. But, you know, it does it does uh, prove to you that if you pick the right glass, you can actually get a decent pour out of a cheap run-of-the-mill beer. Okay, and you can see the upside down snowstorm there. It actually, if you if you can see it, I don't know if you can, I can. Um, you can actually get a decent port, but you've got to pick the right glass for the style of beer. And maybe that, maybe maybe you can see it now, because it should be, this is high def video, so you should be able to see that. Not that that makes it taste better, <clears throat> because it's just a, a, you know, crappy store bought, you know, cheap beer, uh, but it, it does, it does help if you pick the right glass, and this is a uh, a Pilsner style glass. So, cheers. I'm going to try and keep this video a little shorter than last week because I don't want to hog the, um, the you know the thing. And some people can't watch long videos. Um, but the reason why I'm drinking that again is because I had homebrew. Um, last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I had a friend come over and we sort of polished the keg, so. <laughs> it hit the bottom, and so I, there you have it. I can't brew it fast enough. I can brew it fast enough for just me, but not to have somebody over. So that's why that's happening. But I do have another batch ready to keg tomorrow. Um, so let's talk about my beer gun, my homemade makeshift beer gun. Let's talk about some stuff I got in the mail uh, yesterday and today, and let's talk about the uh, SJ Pour Challenge and where I'm at with that. Okay, so let's do it. First of all, let me show you what I got in the mail. Uh, I'm a little upset because uh, on uh, Monday I got something in the mail, uh, and I, unfortunately I didn't. Um, when the person contacted me, I knew who they were, so I. I didn't put them through the the normal channels that I normally put people through when I when they ask me to if they want to send me something. Therefore, I don't have a record of his message. I don't know where it was sent on Facebook. Was it sent on uh, Seventeen Brew Crew uh, on Von Live? I don't know. I've searched, but anyway, he knows who he is. If he's watching this video, he'll be able to chime in in the chat or in, down below in the, in the comments and, and tell us who he is. Now he knows that I like vinyl. By the way, we have new shirts. This is a red one. You can get these in black and dark blue. And the back says WCRAIG Radio. I think you've seen that before. Um, 
I do consider my Friday night broadcast a radio broadcast. It's not. It's an internet radio broadcast. So that's my Friday night broadcast, 10 p.m. Eastern, and it's a radio show, and it goes all night long. So if you haven't seen it yet, please check it out. Thank you. So he sent me some stuff for my vinyl. He calls it Vinyl Care, a Vinyl Care package. And you need these, and I appreciate him sending me these. These are uh, plastic sleeves that go over the album covers. And actually, I'll show you one that I've put in already, which is one of my favorite albums and most prized possession albums. One of them, anyway, is this Rush Hemispheres record. And I probably should have put the thing at the back so it looked better. But anyway, it's sealed. It's sealed in this plastic. And there's a sticky um, little envelope thing here that comes off and then you can take out the record and listen to it. Um, he also sent me the uh, the static proof see this is why I should okay yeah the static proof uh, sleeves to put the records themselves in and that preserves the record and it also preserves the actual sleeve which is the one that's got the pictures on it. You don't want to be taking that in and out all the time because that'll wear it out and it'll get you know damaged so and that just sticks back on and these things stick over and over and over again and I love that that is very very cool I'm gonna put some of my most prized possession records in uh, in those they're durable and they work very well um, so he he sent me a bunch of those like there's I don't know there's got to be 30 40 in there maybe 50, I don't know I don't know how many there is but there's a lot there's a lot in there uh, enough for me to do most of, my, uh, you know, a lot of my my prize possession records, and still have lots left over for newer ones that come in. And again, here's the static proof ones. There could, there might be a hundred here. There might be 50, 75. I, don't, I haven't counted them, but there's a lot. So thank you very, very much. I, I, I just when when people think about things like that, when they think, oh, Craig's got lots of records. You know, and he's probably almost got every record he wants. Almost. Don't don't get me wrong. There's a lot, there's a few that I still I die for, but you know he's got a lot of vinyl. But maybe he needs a, a way to store them properly. Because you you guys have seen me sometimes if you watch my cast, you've seen me frustrated on there when I put a a, a, a record on that's very very new, and there's a skip or a crack on it, and it's because you can't bugs things get into those records you wouldn't believe it but that's you go research it and they get in there and they you know they they lay eggs or they do something you know else on there and it causes a, a crackle or a pop and a skip and you have to clean it and everything else and it's not good so these things will help and so thank you very much and please post down here or send me an email uh, let me know because I, I can't I don't know his his actual name to mention his name but I do remember the message he sent me. Okay, and the other package I got contained um, a thing of star sand, which uh, over there you saw. I've got lots of star sand now, and you could never have enough star sand, ever, because you know I like to make a fresh fresh batch every time I brew, but I'm a little conservative, and I try to use you know it for several days or even a week. Um, or if it sits for that long, maybe I'll pour it out and make a new batch and whatnot. So, and it is expensive uh, here because it has to be shipped from the U.S. And um, it, so there's a shipping cost, and of course the price of gas and fuel these days. Pff, huh. So that's what hikes up the uh, the price of these things when we have them shipped across the border. His, his name is Jared, but he's from Seventeen the Seventeen Brew Crew website. And obviously that's where he uh, contacted me. So um, he sent me the note and he sent me a sticker. This is from uh, Hophead's um, Home Brewing Supplies, Craft Home Brewing Supplies. And I have, I believe I have a shirt from these guys, but I didn't wear it today because I wanted to wear my shirt. <laughs> but there's their thing. That's a sticker. And... Uh, I'll stick this on my fridge over there in my brewing area um, and, and try to get it, make sure it's on camera for once in a while when we shoot over there. So as an advertisement for them. And they're in Florida, okay? So they sent me... Um, 
This is about 11.5 pounds of grain. Guess what this is? Well, guess what kind of beer this is going to be? Like, not the style, but the type of brewing method. It's an all-grain beer. And so, these aren't ground crushed up yet, so that's good. Because I, I won't have time to brew them immediately. Um, so they, they'll sit for a, a week, maybe. And I'll get the mash ton out, and we'll, we'll do up this uh, batch. And I've got the instructions, and he sent me that, too. And he's got the, um, the hops here, which I'll probably get my... Um, these are uh, Chinook hops. I'll probably get my bag sealer out and just give this a little vacuum seal put it in my freezer. Make sure that they stay... I can smell them through the bag. I'll probably get a freezer bag out and put them in the freezer bag and give them a little security while I wait to do this. And uh, some Nottingham. So everything I need to uh, to make this batch of beer and the instructions. So thank you so much, Jared. So the grains we have, we have Vienna, Two Row, Chocolate, Crystal 60, um, and Biscuit. Then we've got our hops, uh, which are the uh, Chinook and the, uh, not the yeast. So um, that's all I'm going to say right now. Um, and so it looks to me like it's sort of a chocolate or a order style beer. I'm not sure. I'm going to put this into Beersmith <laughs> and see what it uh, what it sort of says. Um, but uh, anyways, thank you Jared very very much. I really appreciate that from uh, from Hopheads Craft Home Brew Supplies in Florida. You guys give them a look them up online. If you live near there, please, you know, give them a whirl. Get something from them and, you know, mention me if you do. I really would appreciate that. It's great to have support like this. I, I do appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to brewing this beer. So that's awesome. Cool! All right, I can take these off now. I always hated wearing glasses. But it's getting to the point now where I have to wear them. And especially when I do my broadcast, I, I have to wear them the whole time or I can't see what I'm doing. This shirt has home brewing on one side here and WCR AIG Radio on the other sleeve as well, and um, we're this close to putting these up for sale. I think the black ones are already there, and tgtshirts.com if you want one, they're there. If you don't, don't worry about it, just move on. All right, cheers. Okay, um, last part of this video is to talk about the SJ Pour Challenge and where I'm at with that. And in order to do that, I have to go and get my little beer gun, if you want to call it a... Whoops, did I move the camera there? If you want to call it a beer gun. I decided that I wanted to keg the beer that I make for the challenge. And so that I can taste it and I can make sure it's carbonated properly and then put it into bottles. And so my research has been fine, you know, how do you bottle from the keg? And I already had an idea how to do it, but looked on YouTube and come up, came up with the best way I know how, excuse me, without spending a hundred bucks on a Blickman beer gun. And you know, if you want a hassle-free way of doing it, you got the money, go ahead, you know. And I, I don't, I would buy one, but I don't bottle that often. I don't transport my beer that often at all. It would be once a year for the uh, SJ, SJ Pour Challenge. And uh, if even if that, if I even get into it next year. So, um, you know, I don't want to spend a hundred bucks on that. So I, I came up with this. This is just, you know, sort of, you know, from on the internet. I'll grab a bottle so we can see how this might work. And I haven't tried it yet, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to experiment with this. So we've got um, we've got our little um, picnic tap here, okay, which is missing. Obviously, the I have to connect it to the uh, the hose to the keg, right? And that goes into there. I got a little piece of plastic there holding that on, so everything fits. And then it comes down to this bung here, which uh, I I might replace this with a, a smaller cork uh, pla a rubber one, but this is working for now. Then this part, and of course, this is this is not clean yet. This is tubing that I had laying around for you know I don't know how long, 
and I may actually replace this as well. But this is just an, a prototype of uh, the idea. So the idea is that you take the uh, the uh, beer dogfish head. Ooh, <laughs> sorry. Put that down in the bottle, and you tighten the this this is the way this bung works. If you put it upside down, it actually tightens onto the mouth of the bottle, and then you start your flow. I'm not going to go through the whole, you know, you, you can look up on YouTube how to bottle beer from kegs. And I, maybe I'll do a video on it when I do it. Um, you, you reduce your serving pressure down really low, and you, you slowly you put it in, and it goes into the bottom of your bottle. And because this is sealed, you're actually bottling it under pressure so that you're not, uh, the CO2 can't, as long as you've got a positive pressure inside the bottle, then you're not going to get a lot of foam as you're bottling the beer and you're not going to lose a lot of carbonation. Okay, um, so that's the whole point of this. And then once it gets to the point where it won't fill anymore because the pressure's too high, you just lift your thumb up a little bit, you let a little bit, a little bit of air out, and then you push it back down and you keep going. And you can successfully, apparently, according to some people online, successfully bottle your beer from a keg using this method. Okay. Um, if you guys have tried this, if you have any suggestions, um, I don't want to spend a hundred bucks on a Blickman beer gun. I know they're probably great to have if you have one. You know, more power to you. But I don't need. I, I can't justify it. So. Um, just for you know, just for this, you know. So anyway, that's the, that's what I've got, and I'll try this, not on the beer I'm going to send to there, but uh, another beer I'm doing first that will uh, will try to keg it from the bottle. I mean, bottle it from the keg. So that's what I've got there. That's how we're going to try that, because I don't I don't just want to bottle it and then hope. All right, is the carbonation right? Is it good? You know, did it work? I want to I want to keg it up try a glass, get the carbonation right, and then figure out how I can bottle it from the keg successfully, and then send them out, and that's what I want to do. And then I can, as many as I need to send out, I'll just bottle that many. I won't, you know, do the whole thing. And I have to buy bottles too, which uh, apparently is, I can do it pretty cheap. I, I contacted my supplier and get some pretty decent bottles. Probably gonna do glass. I wasn't going to do plastic PET, but I don't want that because I don't want the plastic to expand and reduce the carbonation. I'd rather have glass and have it rigid, and that's it. Cap it off, boom, send it out. I brewed up a uh, with the Pat Max brewing caps. Okay, I brewed up a, um, a hard apple cider, which is right here, and it's only a couple hours old, so it's not even started to ferment yet. So it's still soft, and it's still doing its thing, all right, and two, count them, two bottles of beer, this is beer, okay, it's a very simple dry malt extract, two hop additions, I can't remember, the hops I added, I, he actually sent me some hops, but I decided to use different ones, and don't know what the one, I don't even know what they are, there's no label on them, and that's why I use them because I want to see what the, what they taste like and what better way to do it with small batches. Okay, so there's two liters, four I mean four liters of of uh, beer and there's the Pat Max brewing caps on top there, and that's what's going to happen. So these are going to go up in the closet upstairs in the hall where it's warmer, and once they're ready to drink. Then I will make the video of me making another batch of them. See, I'm, I'm trying it first. I want to make sure that everything works out the way I did it. And if it does, then, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll make a video and show you exactly how I made these. And of course, I can drink these in the video and show you how they turned out. So it's all, you see how it's made and you see how it turns out made like that. So I'm going to finish my store-bought beer. Tomorrow I will have kegged beer, I hope. I was going to keg it tonight, but it's still kind of bubbling over there a little bit. It's still kind of doing something, so it's like, oh man, can't do it. Uh, oh, by the way, like the hat? Hey, there. We'll talk about these being for sale soon as well. If you want one, there they are. 
Cheers, guys. 17, thanks for watching. Hope this wasn't too long for you. That's what's going on. That's what we've got. We'll see you Friday on my live broadcast. Be safe, guys. We'll see you soon. Take care. And more brewing videos are coming up. I've said that before, but, you know, I'm basically a busy guy. So I'll do my best. Cheers.